Hello, my name is Victor Lopez and this is Direct Democrats. Today I'm going to talk about an item which I think it will persuade many people that direct democracy is superior. As you probably know, direct democracy means the people make the major decisions, the people directly. The people directly have the option to decide any policy, any law, and even changes to the constitution, independently of the will of the politicians, independently of the will of the executive or the legislative, and even the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has no say on political decisions made by the people. Okay, what, why is it, why is it, what aspect is this that makes direct democracy superior? Well, it's very important. I think once you hear it, you'll realize it is true. Direct democracy is the system we need. Direct democracy doesn't mean that people have to make all the decision. Direct democracy means that people have the right and they have the right to exercise it on their own initiative to initiate a referendum on any policy, any law, or any change to the Constitution. They do not need the support of the politicians, of a party, of any group, of the judges, or anybody. They do it on their own. They start to collect signatures, and when enough signatures are collected, the issue, the policy, the law, the change in the Constitution goes to a vote, to a referendum. And the decision that comes out of the referendum is binding and final. The politicians, the government, have no choice but to implement it. And even the Supreme Court cannot say, no, that decision by the people cannot be executed because it goes against the Constitution. In a direct democracy, the supreme judges of the Constitution are the people themselves. The only way to undo the result of a referendum in a direct democracy is another referendum, which normally will not happen immediately because the issue will have to mature and so forth. But going back to the key item of this presentation, you see, direct democracy does something marvelous. Direct democracy makes it possible for people to vote to decide the specific issues. That is, people can decide it independently of the parties. As you know, in a representative democracy, I do not even refer to dictatorships. I don't care if they are party-style dictatorships, one-person dictatorships, or one-religion dictatorships. In my opinion, none of them are legitimate governments. But what does direct democracy do? Direct democracy allows people to decide issues independently of the parties. Let's use, for example, the United States, and I use the United States because it's a country that most people have some familiarity with. In the United States, if you want to support politicians that support abortion, you have no choice but to vote Democrat. If you want to vote for politicians that support uh, universal health care, you have no choice but to vote Democrat. If you want to vote for control of immigration, you have no choice but to vote Republican. If you want to vote for banning abortion, you have no choice but to vote Republican. But these issues, they are controversial, but we know, we know, we all have friends that could be progressive in some issues and conservative in other issues. For example, a person could be in the Democratic Party and still oppose abortion. Or a person could be a Republican and still want universal health care, taxpayer funded on some other way. In the current system of political parties, it's impossible for the citizens to decide, I want to vote for this politician because these politicians will do what I want. That is not possible because the politician has to attract as many voters as possible and to do that he has to have positions on a number of issues. But we all know that while maybe the majority of people who support the Democrats will support what you would call progressive causes, there is also a significant amount of people that support that party that, for example, want more strict controls on immigration. Likewise, 
in the Republican Party. There could be people who support uh, control of immigration. But at the same time, these people will want freely available abortion or they would want universal health care. So you see, in a representative democracy, this is the problem. The voters cannot really ever be sure that the people they vote for are they going to do what they want. Or even sometimes they have to vote for the people, for the party they want, knowing that in some important issues, that party is against their will. How do you solve that? It's very easy. You just have people vote on issues. Abortion, let it be a national referendum on abortion. Probably most people who support abortion are Democrats, but I'm sure there is a sizable number of Republicans who also support it. Likewise, for example, border controls. I'm sure that most people who support border controls probably will vote, vote Republican, but a sizable number of people that want border controls will vote Democrat. The beauty of direct democracy is that allows a group of people, uh, just a few citizens, to get the ball rolling, to collect signatures, to bring to a binding referendum each of those issues. For example, in the case of abortion, all Americans have the chance to vote on abortion. That means that when the results of the referendum come out, we know that the majority of Americans democratically support abortion or ban abortion. It's a fully democratic decision either way. And the people who lose the argument, they will have no choice if they're real Democrats, but to accept the verdict of the majority. Likewise, it will be with universal health care. If the Americans brought the issue to a referendum, then Republicans and Democrats will vote on that issue. And the decision that comes out, if, for example, the proposal to bring universal health care wins, then the people who lose out, they will have no choice but to accept the decision of the people, because it's a truly democratic decision. In the system of representative democracy, the decision cannot be democratic because we never know what the majority would vote because the majority never vote. We have opinion polls that indicate that probably pro-abortion will prevail. Or we have opinion polls that indicate that pro-universal health care will prevail. Or that the position of controlling more strictly immigration will prevail or that reducing taxes will prevail or increasing taxes, or go to war or not go to war. Well, you see, they are polls. The only way to know what the people really think and what the people really want is by having the people vote specifically on the issue. And an issue that is put before them, not by the politicians, not by the judges, not by the executive, not by the legislature. The people themselves initiate the process. If in the United Kingdom they had a direct democracy, it would not be Mr. Cameron who will put before the people the opportunity to decide about Brexit. It would have been ordinary British people who would have collected the signatures and put the issue to a referendum. And if it was a referendum initiated by the people and the majority of people decide to leave or to stay, we know it is 100% democratic decision. In most countries, they don't even do what Mr. Cameron did in the UK. They don't consult. Or if they consult and the politicians don't like the result, they say, oh, let's go back to the drawing board. Or in many countries, only issues the politicians want go to a referendum because they decide, for this, we want the backing of the people. No, that's not real democracy. Real democracy is when the people initiate the process of deciding, when the people decide, and when the decision of the people is binding. The problem we have with the democracy is that it forces people to join like religions. You know, I am of the democratic religion, or the democrat religion, I meant, or I am of the republican religion. In other countries, instead of Democrats and Republicans, they may be called liberals and conservatives. They may be called socialists or Christian Democrats, 
or they may, may be called any other, any other names. But in fact, this forces people to feel that they have to belong to this group. And therefore, when they belong to this group, they have to accept what the authorities of the group decide, meaning the politicians they elect. People seem to be used to the idea of there is an absolute truth. And the absolute truth for me is on the left or on the right. But democracy is not about absolute truths. Democracy is about people deciding specifically at a point in time on the merits of each issue. See, that's another beauty of direct democracy. It depoliticizes the issues because it takes the issues out of the hands of the politicians. Abortion in the United States is highly controversial and political, not because the people want to make it so, or universal health care, or border control. It's because the parties polarize the issue because they feel that they have to prevail over the other party. And they are not interested in finding a compromise. The position is the Republicans consider themselves their 100% right on universal health care or on border control or on abortion. And the Democrats do the same thing. Of course, this is not, this is, doesn't make any sense. This is irrational. The people, if we are in a democracy, have to decide themselves. The only way to get that is by pushing for direct democracy. Direct democracy, it doesn't mean we have to get rid of the politicians. The politicians can still keep their jobs. They can still develop a useful function. But the important thing is that any key issue, any key policy, any key law, any aspect of the Constitution, the people have the full right of deciding themselves. And their decision is final. Nobody can prevail over the people. A beautiful consequence of direct democracy is that depoliticizes the atmosphere. It dials down polarization. Because polarization doesn't happen out of the blue. It happens because the parties in the representative democracy system, they have to polarize the issue to try to win the election. They have to say, these people who defend this are horrible or they are stupid or they are anti-nation. And these other people are also the same thing, but for the opposite reason, reasons. We know direct democracy does all these things not because I'm speaking out of theory. We know it because in Switzerland they have been practicing it for more than 150 years. And this is what has happened in Switzerland. The political life is not as polarized as in any other representative democracy. It's much less polarized than in Sweden, in Denmark, in the Netherlands, and of course in Germany, in France, in the United Kingdom, in Canada, in Australia, in the United States, in Japan, everywhere. Direct democracy dials down polarization. To such an extent it does it that in Switzerland for many decades now, the five major parties, four or five major parties, govern together in the executive in coalition. In a coalition. That means... They work together. If abortion is an issue in Switzerland, if, if it's decided by the executive because the people decide not to intervene, it's an agreement among the parties that represent the majority of the voters, the majority of the population, something like 70 to 80 percent. So in this cooperative system that in Switzerland has been produced by direct democracy, you can see that things run smoothly compared to representative democracies. And it is because of that. Interestingly enough, presidential elections are not important in Switzerland. One thing is they do not have one president. The presidency is represented by seven people. And look at this. These seven people are not voted directly by the people. They are selected by the legislature. The parties in the legislature, they come to agreements about the constitution of the executive. You would say, but that's not very democratic. Yes, it is. It is because in the end, the Swiss people always have the power to intervene if they don't like anything the politicians do. They could even change the system on their own. They could even decide, we want to hold a referendum 
to know if the Swiss people want the current system, if they want the executive being appointed by the political parties, or if they want a directly elected executive, or if they want one president or two presidents. See, in Switzerland, the seven people in the executive are equals, are equals. None of them has more decision power than the others. And they rotate the presidency because it's an honorary position. See, such is the extent of cooperation that direct democracy generates. Do not listen to anybody who tells you that direct democracy is bad for minorities, is too slow, people don't know how to make decisions, blah, 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 blah. In Switzerland, the minorities are super well protected. In fact, the French minority, the Italian minority, and the Romansh minority in Switzerland, where about 60% of the people are German speakers, they have more rights, more rights than the people in other countries. They have more rights than the Catalan speaking in Spain, the Basque, the Galician speaking in Spain, the Irish in Northern Ireland, the French in Quebec, and let's not say anything about the native uh, Canadians and Native Americans. So direct democracy is clearly a superior system, is more democratic and more representative than representative democracy because the decisions, the laws, the contents of the constitution represent the will of the people, not the will of the politicians or the will of the judges. I hope you help me spread the ideas, the words and the facts about direct democracy. I am sure, I have no doubt, that as people know more about direct democracy, I use Switzerland as an example because it's a proven, it's a demonstrated reality that direct democracy works. You know that all my videos are closed captioned. All you have to do to see it in, in your favorite language is click in the small sprocket, the toothed wheel in YouTube, and there you have the option CC, and you'll choose your language. It was a pleasure to have the opportunity to communicate this to you. And of course, as always, I'm quite happy to participate in any forum, interview, debate, give a talk or a conference to speak about direct democracy, answer any questions, and in short, try to expand the knowledge and the awareness about direct democracy. I will do that anywhere in the world, in English or Spanish, and with some difficulties also in French and in Portuguese. Thank you very much.